All right. Cool. So I just wanted to ask you some questions and get some family stories, some history. Uh, so tell me, where were you born? I was born at Lonsdale, Arkansas, in a teacherage, which is a house like a parsonage. Daddy was the uh, grade school principal and all the boys, mostly boys, fathers were bootleggers and much, much larger than daddy. And he was scared to death of them, but he played basketball with them. On, I was born during the noon hour, and those May were his 7, friends. Those 1933. Were his friends. Huh? Those were his friends that were bootleggers? They were his students. His students. He, was, he taught, this was a consolidated school district, and he taught back in that day, Lonsdale is still there. When we were in Putman City, some children of a member, children lived in Lonsdale, Arkansas. I said, well, I thought it would be long gone. It was near Hot Springs. Okay. And, but it was a consolidated school and the, the children's parents were all bootleg, bootleggers. It was just, they lived off in the woods. What brought your parents to Lonsdale, Arkansas? What, honey? What brought him to that part of Arkansas? Uh, Daddy was raised at Cattle Gap. Mm -hmm. And uh, back in that day, you you got a job. You were fortunate enough right after uh, they got married. Then uh, you stayed there. But then after I was born, uh, in May of 1933, August, we moved to Spiro, Oklahoma, where Daddy was uh, the grade school principal at Spiro for nine years. And then we uh, moved to Wilberton, and we were there five years as superintendent. Daddy was superintendent. And then we went to Lawton for two years and he sold groceries for Griffin Grocery Company. But after the first year, I knew that wasn't gonna work. And the superintendent at Spiro resigned and we were back there for 30 years. Daddy was school superintendent. That doesn't happen today. Mm -hmm. What for, so what made him decide to move to Lawton and Because change mother had a brother, oh, to Arkansas? No, to Lawton. Uh, Lawton because he got disillusioned with the school system and the manager of McAllister District lived across the street from us for Griffin Grocery Company, which was an Oklahoma company. And he talked daddy into going and selling groceries. And he loved it, particularly on Wednesdays, because he went to areas, the smaller towns, and he, but when he was at school walking up and down the aisles waiting for the, uh, for us to get out of school, I knew we were going back to the schools. Mm -hmm. So, uh, And how old were you then when he was selling groceries? I went to Lawton, my ninth and 10th. Oh, wow. High school. So you had to make new friends as a freshman in high school, huh? Completely. And then you were back to mm -hmm. your old friends in Spyro? Yes. And that's where you graduated from? And we, uh, we were there two years. The former superintendent of schools had no control of the school system. And it was before integration and it it was a problem. Mm -hmm. I don't want to go there anymore. And back to the integration, then after I was in college, junior in college, everybody came running to me and said, they're suing your daddy in Spiral, Oklahoma for not complying with the national government uh, 
immigration law. And so that was the beginning of a lot. What uh, year would that have been? Uh, well, as you know, the government, there isn't one person, there are two or three different people with a problem that are involved with it. And each one of those three people were telling daddy in the school district different stories as to what to do. And really didn't know which one to do. Mm -hmm. But we survived. So he actually was sued daddy, by the government? Daddy had the only high school, separate high school in Lepore County. And Everybody else had integrated? Children were bused mm -hmm. into Spyro, and they called it the separate school. Uh, for years. That's all the education. They'd get on the bus early in the morning, and it would be late at night when they got home. Because they would go miles on the other side of Poto to come to high school at Spyro. Was Spyro mostly white? Or uh -huh. they, was it mixed? White with dominant, with the area. Fort Coffee was between Spyro and Fort Smith. A lot of the OU football players came from Fort Coffee. Mm -hmm. And uh, back in that day, Like if daddy had a group of basketball or football or home economics, FHA girls, and we went to conventions, there was a hotel in Oklahoma City called Kincaid, and it was down close to the railroad track. And we would all stay there, and then the maids and the elevator operators cooks and everybody took our black kids home with them. Isn't that too bad? Mm -hmm. They were they not were, allowed to stay in the hotel. They they would take them back on the other side of the tracks mm -hmm. to, and they didn't know them really? Right. They didn't really know who they They didn't were. know them, but they were good people and they helped daddy out. So uh, he had a real good, uh, he was good to his everyone. Yeah. And uh, so anyway, we we lived there and then... Uh, so let me ask you then, did they think that... And your dad's name was what? Did what, honey? Your father's name was... Charles Vaught. Yeah. And did they think that he was not complying with the rules? Did they think he was doing Washington, that? Washington, D.C. did, mm -hmm. but... Oh, uh, he escaped all of that because really it was a new thing, Garrett, and they really, no, no one, each situation was different. And Daddy was uh, one that had the high school yeah. for the, they call it the separate church. And he was a superintendent at that time? Of the Spyro schools. And was it? And was that, there two high, just the two high schools in Spyro? Oh yes, one very was a small separate, town. One was a separate high school, yes. and the other one was for yes. all the white kids. Yes, and before this was all said and done, and before I graduated from high school, one night that separate building was caught on fire. When it you burned were in high to school? the ground. Oh my! It was a rock building, and. Daddy had, it was used for storage. Because once those kids came, they didn't go back to that separate school. They just was school. one high school. They went to one school. Yeah. And, and so after that integration happened, mm -hmm. that building was set on fire? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any ideas on who they thought did it? They, they was said, I, you know, I was young. Mm -hmm. I don't remember. Uh, everything, but it was an intentional. Yeah. And uh, what was it like? Do you have memories of of 
colleagues or friends of the family that were racist? You know, I was young and I thought it was so really strange they'd come to the house, and of course it was right there on the highway. They never came to the front door. Who did? Who did? All of the black people, and we had lots of friends, mm -hmm. lots of friends, and they, but never to the front door. What were they coming over for? Different things. And they were they part, brought they were us coming a whole to bunch see of stuff. The superintendent. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And these and it, were teachers, and uh, it was not fun. Uh, we had a group uh, in our First Methodist Church that said, if a black person enters this church, I will, you'll never see me again or my checkbook. Mm -hmm. Of course, that ended. I mean, they finally came around, but we had black people who came to church. But that, remember, was in the 50s. Mm -hmm. So you were in your 20s at, mm -hmm. that, at that time. Uh, I, when I married, I was 24. But that was all while I was in college. Mm -hmm. See, let's see, 50, I graduated from high school in 51. Well, this started about 50. Mm -hmm. 1950, and uh, so when we moved to uh, Wilberton, we had another separate school, and they went there. Who the did? students, the black students, went to this separate, separate school. school, and that was a that was after Spiral. After Spiral, and you we were went, you were. We, are we you went, having kids at that time or? Yeah, we went to Wilberton in 1942. Oh, okay. And we were there five years. And the colored bus driver, oh. it's probably my kids, I will be back. All right. Uh, Call from Cindy. Aunt Cindy. Hello? Uh-huh. And Derek's still here, honey. He's interviewing me on, on uh, my life. All right. I don't want to get started on Everybody's that. checking on you. That was, uh-huh, to yeah. see if I was home. Yeah. Uh, anyway, the first year we moved there to uh, Wilberton, which was 1942, Across the street from us, the former school superintendent lived. And on the other side, his bus driver for the separate school, Walter and Maddie. And every Saturday morning, Gail and I would go over to Maddie and Walter's house. She'd set the dining room table and whatever she had cooked for Walter earlier, she cooked for us. And finally, Mother crossed the street one day to come and see what we were up to. <laughs> so while we lived over there, we lived there one year, and then we moved across town uh, closer to the school. We always had breakfast on Saturday morning with Maddie and Walter. Mm -hmm. They had no children. And, and so he was a bus driver? Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. for the separate school. Mm -hmm. And uh, I took JC to Wilberton to meet Maddie. Uh, Walter had died before we got married. Yeah. And she sent my daddy, when we left Wilberton and went to Lawton, Maddie mailed him, mailed him a big, cake of gingerbread and collards. You know what <laughs> collard turnip greens? Mm -hmm. Daddy loved them. And he, she mailed those to Lawton. And you can imagine what a mess we had. <laughs> but, uh, well, let me ask you. So, uh, you were born in 1933 and you had a sister, right? What's her name? 
Mm -hmm. What's your sister's name? Gail, Mary Gail. Yep. And so she's older than you? No, she's, she's 19 younger. months younger. Okay. So and what do you remember about growing up with a sister that close in age? What are some of the memories you have with Aunt Gail? <laughs> My sister was an Elizabeth. <laughs> She carried Elizabeth, in my Elizabeth. bugs. Uh -huh. She carried in turtles, terrapins, and quite the tomboy. Uh -huh. I was not a tomboy. She played outside with the boys, and I was in the kitchen. <laughs> it was fun. We had no problems. It, it was just par for the course. So was she a year behind you in school? Yes. Mm -hmm. She was born in 34, December of 34. Mm -hmm. And uh, Who was the first one to have a boyfriend? Gail <laughs> at Lawton across the street from us. And she kept up with him. She would have been in what, eighth grade? Gail was two years behind me. Two years so, behind you in school. Uh -huh. so is that no, no, no. One, one year. year. So you were in ninth, tenth. That may put her ninth eighth and, and ninth. Ninth and tenth. So she was eight. Eighth and ninth grade. Eighth and ninth. I graduated from the from the ninth grade in Wilberton. I graduated. No, wait a minute now. From the eighth grade at Wilberton and at Lawton, I graduated from the ninth grade mm -hmm. because Wilberton had four year high school and Lawton had three year. Oh, I see. See? So you went to one year of high school in Lawton? Uh -huh. That's 10th grade? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, no, uh, it was the Little Vault Girls. Yeah. Then when we. After I married and we were living in Poto, there were so many people there that had known me forever. From Spyro, married and moved to Poto. Till you were the, the little vault girls <laughs> with three kids. So who got into more trouble, you or Aunt Gail? Gail. Do you ever remember something that she did that <laughs> where she got in the most trouble? I was a senior. They were juniors, and all of the Methodist and the Baptist and the good kids. Uh, we had a ball game. Football. Uh, we had a. We were all on the annual staff. I was the editor, and then each of these other kids, and they went to Fort Smith. She and Gail was on the newspaper staff, and she went to Fort Smith. I was the editor. Uh huh. Of a yearbook, you know. So you were her boss. Uh huh. So anyway, mother had pneumonia and was flat up her back, and so this ball game was scheduled for two thirty. Football, basketball, basketball game, and you went. They were playing in Arkansas. Well, they went to Arkansas, Fort Smith, to sell ads for the yearbook. Oh, and, and that's they left right, at noon. That's right across the state line. Oh yeah. Uh huh. They left at noon because <laughs> the ball game was supposed to start at two thirty, and it rained, and there was no ball game. A basketball game was you outside. Might, it must have been football. Uh -huh. I can't remember exactly because it rained and they couldn't play. Yeah. And there they all had played hooky, so to speak. Two cars of them. That was on Friday. So our telephone rang off of the wall. Saturday, Sunday. Has Mr. Vaught said anything? Has Mr. Vaught said anything? Daddy let those kids sweat it out all weekend. Because what? They didn't, where were they supposed? They, didn't, they were supposed to be in school. See, when the ball mm -hmm. game oh, didn't appear. Yeah. So they were delinquent. Yeah. <laughs> That's the worst thing Gail ever did. Uh huh. And oh my goodness, I had rather have gotten a spanking from my daddy instead of <laughs> the silence. Of nothing. <laughs> so he was, 
So okay. he's the superintendent. You and Aunt Gail had to be on your best behavior. Oh, yes, always. And then I married a preacher, <laughs> and then I had to be on my best behavior <laughs> as well as my kids. Mm -hmm. But uh, but anyway. So um, did you guys get, did he spank y'all as kids? He didn't, Daddy didn't spank. Were you more afraid of him or your mama? I was afraid of Daddy. <laughs> yeah. No, the only spanking I ever got from Daddy, and he re regretted it. The Roosevelt was speaking. We were in Spiro, so it was 40s. And when he spoke, everybody was quiet. I mean, nobody made a sound. And the bedroom, our bedroom was- Is this on the radio? Off. Yes. Mm -hmm. Radio, and we were jumping on the bed. And Daddy came in and swallowed us both and left the handprint <laughs> on my thigh. And he regretted that to the day he died. That's the spanking. And it was because Roosevelt was speaking and we mm -hmm. were not allowed to speak. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you would have been around nine or so whenever the war was really serious, oh, yeah. right? Do you remember the day of Pearl Harbor? Yes. What do you remember about I that? I remember that Gail had a birthday on the 17th of December and they gave us a little zipper New Testament. Who did? Mother and Daddy on Gail's birthday. See, when she had a birthday, she got a gift. <laughs> when I had a birthday, vice versa, you know. Mm -hmm. But, uh, I, I just remember that it was bad. Uh, I was little, mm -hmm. 1941. Yeah. I wasn't, I wasn't, this is You've 10. Eight. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I remember when um, President Roosevelt died. I was, we were in Wilberton and we had a horrible storm and my was at my music lesson and she had a tin roof mm -hmm. and i was on the bicycle and boy that hail on a tin roof and you know they're going back to tin roofs now gail has one on that house mm -hmm. but uh but anyway uh it where gail was i was mm -hmm. We used to cry to get to ride the school bus when we went to out of town ball games. And we had to always go with Mother and Daddy. And, you know, it, it, it was just a way of life there. You had to ride with your parents? Had, mm -hmm, one car. Yeah. And, uh, so. so. I want to get back to the boyfriend uh, conversation. So, Aunt Gail had her first boyfriend. His what do you remember? His name was about? Robert Bob Hillis. Bob Hillis. They really didn't go anywhere. <laughs> they just went across the street. Uh huh. They what about your first boyfriend? Oh. Do you remember? You know, I don't remember. I wasn't as interested in the boys as Gail was. <laughs> okay. She was more interested. Uh, we went in groups at Lawton and uh, I was in one group and Gail was in another group. Well, how would you describe your group? Well, they were normal kids. <laughs> Daddy was taking us to a, a uh, sorority. I was, it was Subdeb and I belonged and Gail didn't, but Daddy, Gail was with us in the car, was taking uh, two of my friends and us to a meeting, to an overnight meeting. And we almost got run over with a train. There was no marking or bells or anything. We came up on a hill and she lived out in the country. And- Who was driving? Daddy. Mm -hmm. And we really, just barely with the hair. So that was enough to scare us all to death. But 
I had my first job when I was 16 years old. Doing and what? he told me, that's what your mother taped. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, I've forgotten even the whole situation, but when I was 16, I worked at a caramel corn place downtown. We sold fudge, all different kinds of candies, homemade, cheese popcorn, all kinds of different kinds of popcorn. And I made enough money to buy mother a set of a place setting of four dishes. And I don't know where they are. And they were very small and had they were apple. And I had a place setting of four. Bought that was with all my money. And uh and that girl said, I never knew you worked when you were in high school. And we lived on Bell, uh, 1809 Bell. In what and, city? In Lawton. Mm -hmm. And we had Cameron, there was a two-year college, Cameron at Lawton, Cameron Road. And we had three long blocks. And then we had 16th Street, and it was three short blocks. And I would ride the bus home, and either mother or daddy would meet me at each corner, whichever bus I got on, then they'd meet me. It'd be dark. And uh, that's what Kathy said, you never told me. <laughs> yeah, I did. I did there for two years. And that was both, and I both didn't years learn to drive, honey, until we got to Spyro. And uh, because I was 16 in Lawton. And uh, there was, was your... Army base there. Yeah. And I didn't realize it, but uh, you never knew what was going on, you know, and that's the reason Mother and Daddy met me. Mm -hmm. But, uh, what do you remember about your first car? My first car? I was a, a teaching school. That was my first car. It was a, a Mercury and is as big as a hearse. First car they brought me uh, was a, a convertible. Oh, it was a neat little car. Daddy and his bus driver, his mechanic, went to photo. And I said, go get me a car that you all, I can drive. I had my job at Midwest City. So. And how old were you? This is your very first car that you ever had. That's my very first car. And then by this point, you were, you were already out of college? Uh-huh. I was getting ready to go teach. Yeah. I drove everybody else's car mm -hmm. in college. Anyone that had, a, I did my practice teaching in Tattlepaw and the college it was at one end of the main street and my school was at the far end. It was a long way. And so one of the men, boys, said, Jeanette, you just drive my car. And I said, well, what are you gonna do for a car? And he said, I don't need one, I'm here on campus. And I drove his car every day, back and forth, and it sat at the school all day. But I never had a car, except daddy's. And uh, yeah, I, so anyway, I got in the car and I drove it. I said, there's something wrong with this car. The it one just you were borrowing? It doesn't feel right, the, the convertible. And I said, take it back and look again. This was the first car that uh, Granddaddy bought brought you. Yes. And you he didn't a, buy it. A convertible. I bought it. You bought it. Yeah, you gave, I did. did you give him the money and say, go pick it out? Yeah, I did. And he, he didn't like what it he picked like it out? It was like about less than $1,000. Okay. And so uh, he said, uh, so they went back and they brought me this hearse, <laughs> four door, 
my little head just barely was sitting up. They could barely see me driving. That's the best car. It drove me from Midwest City. I'd leave uh, right when school was out. And my goal was to get to Eufaula and cross this god awful bridge before dark. And I'd go right on in Spyro. And I, I really uh, enjoyed it. It was the best car. I drove it for two years. JC had a Mercury. We should have kept my car, but we kept his. It had a great big bird on it when we got married. And it was a, a later model than mine. Mine was an older car, but we sold it to a OU uh, med student, freshman. He drove that car four years. Not one problem. It didn't use any oil. All it needed was gasoline. Then he gave it to his little brother. By that time, they had moved to Durand. And uh, he bought a... The car burned up. He bought a motorcycle and very shortly after he got on that motorcycle, he had a wreck and died. But that's the story of my car. I mean, it was a, it was a good car. Well, before we get too far into your adult life, I did want to circle back and ask you about your mom. Mama. Yep. What was her full name? Madge Lorena Goodner. No. Do you remember when she was born? Oh, 19 and, let's see, six. No, daddy was born in 1906. Mama was born in 1905. Mm -hmm. At Oden, Arkansas, which was a inland town. You go there, you don't pass through. You know what I'm saying? A dead end? It was in the center of two highways, uh -huh. one to go to Mena, one to go to Hot Springs. And Olden was right there. And it was one of these that no black people allowed. Oh, I see. Mother was not raised with any blacks, mm -hmm. which made her prejudiced. She uh, went to two years of college at Arkadelphia and got her teaching, lifetime teaching certificate. And then Granddaddy was the postmaster at Odin for years. And he hired a driver to drive Mama to Flower Hill, which was a little consolidated school to teach. Unknown. And uh, then she met Daddy. And Daddy was teaching at another little school closer to Odin. She, mother was rotten. She was the baby of the family. She had anything she wanted. She was another Elizabeth. She had ducks. She had a raccoon. She had all kinds. Raccoon? Of raccoon. What do you mean, a pet? Pe mm -hmm. What? We've got pictures of her with raccoons. And uh, she had uh, an older sister who died right after she got married, which of course I never knew. And then she had three brothers. One brother was not a very good man. Which, what was his name? Albert. Albert was the second oldest, but he brought his son home 
who was a year older than me, and grandmother raised him. And then when Morris got old enough, he ran to his daddy and broke grandmother's heart. And then Uncle Clyde was a, a teacher. He taught at Paws Valley in a, there used to be a, oh, reformatory for wayward boys in Paws Valley. He was superintendent of that school. Mm -hmm. And way back there, when Mother had was still teaching, she had to have her tonsils out. And so Uncle Clyde brought her to Oklahoma. Mother had them out at St. Anthony Hospital in Oklahoma City. And then Uncle Roy stayed on the farm. He had five children. Where was the farm? Odin. Okay. It adjoined Mother's. Mm -hmm. And she had anything, everything, and she went to college, and so-and-so would come in and say, can I borrow this match, and it never came back home. They take, they just took her clothes. Who, was, who did? The door, girls in the dormitory. Why do you think they did that? And never did bring them home. They wanted to wear mother's clothes because they were Nice. Nicer than their clothes. Where did her parents get the mo their money? Dad, granddaddy was a, a postmaster. And that that was a good job. That's it. They uh -huh. Paid well. He knew he knew everyone. And uh, he died before he was sixty five. And so grandmother had nothing. No no income. And that is a workingist woman. I, I can remember we spent most summers there. What would they uh, have on the farm? Did they everything? Yeah, they had a huge garden. And, and they would sell that produce to mm -hmm. markets, and mm -hmm. that's how they made some money. Yes. So he was a they postmaster. Had they had cows, horses, pigs, chickens. And grandmother uh, churned, she sold milk, she sold butter, she sold cream, she sold eggs. And this was even before her husband died? She After. Was, she, before he died, did they, they have other the people? They had the garden. And she animal. took care of that? Mm -hmm. What about all the animals? Who took care of the she animals? She took care of them. Then after granddaddy died, she added on two bedrooms. Well, no, it was a huge room with two double beds. And she hired people to come and help her on the farm. And one of those men's father, when we got to Durant, his name was Swearingen, and he, he uh, was insurance. And he sold J.C. his first car insurance way back there when Granddaddy, when they lived and he was in high school. And when Mother came, it was just like a homecoming because she knew Rector. They both were kids. His name was what? Rector Swearingen. And that was the father of one of the that was the uh, that was help. the son of the father who helped grandmother Cur oh uh, i see Curry. Yep. grandmother goodner mm -hmm. i called the roll <laughs> but uh so anyway a uh, mother was she was rotten and it was very difficult for her when they came to spyro to be around the black people but we made a hero out of her <laughs> And every time we'd go to any school function, they'd pin a corsage on Mother with runners running all the way down her dress. <laughs> but she made it. And did she uh, did she ever have a, a full time job? Oh, she taught. She, no, she taught, and then uh, 
she substituted uh -huh. at Spiral. And then when we got to uh, Wilberton, she taught mm -hmm. first grade. Mm -hmm. And at Wilberton, the lower three grades was at the bottom of the hill and the high school was at the top. And mother, uh, see, long time ago, those long time life certificates, you could teach anything. In any state? Because she no, would have... No, I'm not sure about she that. She would have... Uh, Arkansas and Oklahoma, you could. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure, but a lifetime, I think you could. Mm -hmm. but so how was, she, how was she as a mother? What do you remember about her when you were growing up? Did she have oh, ho hobbies or did she, you know, what, what do you remember honey, the most? she loved, she cooked. She loved to cook. She made hot rolls. She loved to cook. The older she got, only what she liked to cook. And mostly it was desserts and hot rolls. Mm -hmm. And she uh, was smart as a tack. She got me through, and my friends, through algebra and geometry. And They'd come over and mother just set us all down and explain it to us. She was smart as tech. And she met people well and she read people well. She, JC's mother did too. But, uh, like JC's mother walked in the parsonage at Fairview and Cindy was a baby and she, Mother would come before the babies, and then Grandmother Curry would come after and stay two weeks. And then this lady came to call, and she was telling me, I bought this for this house, and I bought that for this house, and so forth. So when she left, that woman's name was Postmaster at Fairview. She said, Jeanette, she's trouble. Don't forget what I said. And she was right. She was a, a a mess. Now, who is this? Grandmother Curry. Grandmother Curry. Yeah, I skipped. Okay, yeah, that's yeah. okay. But anyway, Mother was a good judge of people. And uh, they always had friends. And we, Mother... While Daddy got his master's at uh, Stillwater, we'd go to Arkansas and stay with Grandmother Goodner. Mm -hmm. And Mother would can everything out of that garden. And then a hundred pounds of flour, a hundred pounds of cornmeal. This is just when we were babies. And so we had a special room that was not heated. And that's where we kept the ham, the cured ham, the cured bacon, the everything. Daddy had it coming down from the ceiling. And all the canned goods was in that one bedroom. And when everybody else ran out of food, then they'd come and mama'd cook sausage or make biscuits or whatever, cornbread, beans, and there were about eight couples. One of the couples was superintendent of schools. And he had four children. And they'd all come and, and eat because there was nothing, no money. The teachers, they got their checks, but they were no good. They wouldn't be able to cash them? There was no money behind to back up the checks. There was no money coming in. And Daddy did everything in the summers. He sorted potatoes down at the railroad station. He worked at two grocery stores. He worked anything and everything to make money, but it was never enough. And so, but Mother, uh, turnip greens, but there was something about mother after 
both of us came, the doctor told mother not to ever have another child after Carol came. She was born at Spiro, and we spent a heap of time in Hevener and at the farm in Kattegat. What was in Hevener? Hevener was my Aunt Dewey, and she had three boys. Aunt Dewey was? Daddy's sister. Yep. And so, but what was her there last was name? something, I think mother had a nervous breakdown, but we don't know. They took us out of school and Aunt Dewey's family knew what it was, Daddy's family did, but we were never told. How long, so you're saying that One, you and weeks. your dad would go stay at Aunt Dewey's in They Hebrew. put us on the, on the uh, Uncle Ernest worked at the Rock Island. Uncle Ernest was Granddaddy's brother? In-law. Brother-in-law. Ernest was, Dewey? Aunt or Dewey, Ernest Dewey and Dewey was supposed to be a girl, a boy. <laughs> And they were gonna name him Dewey, and God love her, she got Dewey May. They had so many kids, they already had, a, and you know, they didn't really want a girl. They wanted all boys, so the boys could help on the farm. Dewey May Vaught. Dewey May Vaught was her name. Uh, what's her married name? Willie Wanda was the baby girl. <laughs> Willie, she was supposed to be a boy. Oh, oh. Yeah. But anyway. So, okay, so yeah, you would be able to get on the bus by yourself? Yeah, on the train. On the train? And, and how long of a train ride was that about? Do you remember? Oh, not long. 45 minutes, maybe an hour. And you were how old in elementary? You were Three years old. I had my little purse on my arm, and Gail was right with my And hand. she would have been two? Yes. And you, a three-year-old and a two-year-old, by yourselves. Got on that train, and Uncle Ernest picked us up at the, at Hevener. It was, Hevener was the big deal, you know, the main company thing. Yes. And then they put us back on the train and send us back to Spyro and, uh, yeah. And so even as an adult, you never asked your mom what was going on back then? Mm -mm. There was one report card that said not in attendance enough to get a report card, which we had six weeks. And uh, by the time I got home, my hair was a mess. Gail hardly had any, but mine, was tangled. Oh, Mama said I was a mess. But <laughs> what did you do in, at that farm? We just took care. They took care of us and fed, fed us and and uh, what and like okay. So you may not remember when you were that little, but you said your hair was a mess. I guess it's because you didn't honey, take I a had bath long, or shower or what? Thick hair. I had straight hair when I was born, Buster Brown. What was it like to take a shower back then or a bath? Is it outside? Is it inside? Did they have to boil the water? How'd that work? In a, in a bathtub, but they had to boil the water. Uh-huh, yeah. Yeah, we had, I, I always had it at my house, we had a bathroom. But when I got to grandparents, they did not. And so I, every summer we had to go to the privy. And <laughs> at the Vaught's house, they kept a great big tub of hot water. It was in the dining room, this huge table. And they kept hot water in it. And anybody just got in that tub of water and took their bath and then they didn't change it for a while. Yeah, all of that same bath. How'd they keep it warm? How many people? They kept it warm all the time? Yeah, that, they kept water boiling on the stove all the time. And they just add more water, of course. Yeah, it was a mess. 
And Aunt Addie did have a bathroom, but it never worked. It Who was is Aunt a Addie? Mess. Daddy's one of Daddy's older sisters, and she lived at Catagap. Had the mercantile store. She had everything. She fed them. She, uh, they had uh, supplies for the farm. Uh, she had some medicine there. There were only two stores in town, the Horns and Aunt Addie's. The Weeks, W-E-E-K-S, was her married name. Addie? Weeks. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then she had the plate lunch. Lunch, she served it. Uh, and, uh, but anyway, uh, it didn't hurt us. And it's next 10 o'clock, honey. You, you need to get on home. Can you pick up at all of that? Oh yeah, absolutely. We'll, uh... It all happened. <laughs> it all 